Okay, uh, so as John said, yeah, my talk is about determining the effects of urban particulates on epithelial cell function. Um, just to provide a bit of background, um, so worldwide air quality, it's in some places it's okay, some places it's not. Um, there are different factors that can lead to poor air quality worldwide and uh, poor air quality itself poses several risks to human health, uh, which is one of the main reasons why we need to uh, assess it, what we breathe in and how it can affect it, whether we need to introduce policies to regulate and whether it's gonna kill us or not, basically. As you can see, uh, for us, uh, based in the UK, air quality is kind of okay. But in other regions such as Sahara Desert and Eastern Asia, the air quality is becoming poor due to um, like poor burning of fuels and uh, desert dust. So it depends on the area, but overall it's not looking good. There are different sources of particular matter, um, whether that's transport, agricultural use, industrial use, um, and we we'll see there, are, as everyone knows here, there are different types of particular matter, whether they are biological, such as bacteria and viruses, as shown by the um, current pandemic going on, which I'm suffering from right now uh, with COVID-19, as well as chemical particular matter, such as smog, uh, diesel exhaust particulates, soot. Um, these can vary in size and they're categorized by PM10, PM2.5, PM1, and PM0.1. And uh, the size is a main uh, component as to where they will impact with the body and where they can settle in the lungs and therefore where they can have an effect. Um, now, as I mentioned before, uh, particular mass pollution has been linked to millions of premature deaths per year, has been shown to exacerbate uh, numerous pulmonary disorders such as asthma, COPD, as well as cardiovascular conditions, diabetes, certain types of cancer, and also neurological uh, disorders such as anxiety and depression, with people 15 to 17% more likely to die prematurely when living in highly polluted areas, as well as 68% more likely to develop lung cancer, which shows that it's such a growing concern, poor air quality, and something we really need to look into. Now, previous work has shown that it can elicit an immune response that can cause damage to cells and the tissue and microenvironment which is in, which is potentially how it causes asthma and COPD. Uh, it's also been shown to increase allergic response. Um, now, DEP is a main component of uh, atmospheric aerosols in urban environments, making approximately 90% um, and it's been shown to cause a power inflammatory response in macrophages and epithelial cells and also a negative effect on overall human health. Now, in relation to this project, uh, as mentioned, we were looking at DEP, because um, we wanted to look at mainly urban um, pollution sources. D we chose DEP rather than, and also soot, but this project mainly focuses, this presentation mainly focuses on DEP. Um, and there are three methods of where it can affect the body really, where it could be inhaled and it can affect the lungs. It can also be swallowed um, and affect the guts, epithelial, and it can also uh, have skin contact. Um, so we want to assess all three uh, forms of contact. Now, instead of looking at DEP as a whole, uh, we looked at individual components to DEP. Now, DEP is uh, made up of a vast variety of chemicals such as nitrophenols, quinones, and fluorinones. Um, so we identified one of each um, to examine. This work that I was showing you is mainly focusing on the effects of 1,2-nathoquinone um, on the uh, cells in the lungs and also in the gut. Now, our hypothesis was that chemical level and pollutants cause damage that trigger an immune response that can then be potentiated by the presence of the herbal and biological pollutants driving to worse inflammation. Now, we uh, performed assays with the presence of biological stimulus. Um, we haven't seen to find some effect of these um, conditions. Uh, so this work is just focusing on the chemical response. Um, we'll see, at first we wanted to see 
are these cells, are these chemicals toxic? Will they just kill our cells? And we can see for the lung epithelial in A and the gut epithelial in B, at high concentrations of natoquinone, we do see the cell death occurring, uh, with greater cell death occurring in the lungs, um, as most of the uh, components will be in the lungs. It is uh, reasonable to see a high death there. Um, this wasn't the case of the three DEP chemicals that we looked at, um, with natoquinone having the most striking results. Um, this work is also similar in macrophages, where we see this trend of not much cell death occurring at the lower concentrations, but a high concentration of 100 micrograms per milliliter, we are seeing this cell death. Now, it's hard to quantify how much natoquinone will be in the atmosphere. Um, at time, it's possibly in the picogram levels. However, due to chronic exposure over time, plus the fact that it could potentially stay in the lungs for a large period of time, it's not being quantified how long it can stay in there. Uh, it is possible that we can reach these levels. Now, we also we looked at cell death. We wanted to see if damage was occurring. And one way to assess damage is uh, to look at the production of reactive oxygen species, or ROS. Um, it's a good way to see what is happening with the cells. And as we saw with the cell death, not much is occurring at the lower concentrations, but at 100 micrograms per milliliter, we are seeing quite a lot of damage occurring with these cells. Um, in a, it tends to have this dose dependent manner with significantly significant results with the uh, 100 micrograms per milliliter. So even though, um, so we, we then use this to pick out uh, the smaller treatments to further our work. Now, we want to see if DEP derived chemicals can produce this pro inflammatory effect. So, we looked at markers such as IL 6, IL 25, IL 33, and ICAM 1. Um, we've shown by the expression of IL 25 and IL 33 there's hand production of type 2 cytokines, which are associated with allergic responses. This is the sublethal levels as shown with the 1 and 10. Um, now, this kind of goes with the um, literature that we are seeing this allergic response happening, this TH2 response. Now, there are slightly different trends um, between the gut and the lungs. However, um, they, do, they, we, they are both showing this inflammatory response is happening. Naphloquinone is causing uh, something to happen to the body. And we also want to look at the pro uh, chemokines such as CCL2, CXCL2, CXCL1. Now, CXCL2 and um, CCL2 are responsible for recruitment of monocytes and neutrophils um, into the environment, as we're seeing that uh, these are being produced, which would suggest that uh, this upregulation of chemokines is causing uh, infiltration of immune cells into the microenvironment. Uh, which is potentially causing inflammation happening. Now, we, IL-6, which we've shown before, can be induced, is respond, one of the main markers um, for the assessment of uh, pollution on uh, the immune response. It's also responsible for cell proliferation and uh, wound healing. So we wanted to see, with this IL-6 being produced, uh, what is happening to damaged cells. So we scratch the cells, we scratch the model layer of cells to see um, once the chemical has been exposed, the cells have been exposed to the chemical, uh, is this causing to a delayed response in healing? Now we are seeing um, in the gut, there is a slight delayed response. Uh, however, there seems to be increased um, wound closure over time um, with the natoquino and the lung cells. Now, um, this is preliminary data, so we need to obviously repeat our experiments, but with previous results shown, there isn't an effect when it comes to cell proliferation. So maybe it's possible that natoquinone is causing an effect with cell migration. So one of the further works will be looking at the uh, migration of these cells over time. Now, just to summarize this work, we've shown that uh, natoquinone is toxic at high concentrations. Uh, especially the 100 micrograms per milliliter that we've shown. However, low level impacts, uh, low level doses have very little impact on cell death as well as cell damage. Um, we are seeing this chemical uh, 
these chemicals causing increased expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines with uh, CXL1, CCL2, CXL2, uh, causing recruitment of monocytes and neutrophils, so it would be ideal to look at them, as well as IL-23 and IL-35 IL and IL-33 expression. This could indicate a TH2 response to being triggered. And these results are similar uh, as shown in the skin epithelium. And one of the questions is that we have from this, could natoquinone, is this chemical that's observed in DEP, is it responsible for uh, the inflammation we see in pulmonary disorders such as asthma and COPD? Um, so the planned work moving this project forward is to treat epithelial cells. How do PM uh, treated epithelial cells impact immune function? So we really want to, we started work on macrophages um, to, with the panel of experiments that I've just gone through uh, to see if there is a response from macrophages and also assess the effects of natoquinone on the macrophage migra migration of function. We also want to treat the cells with a combination of these chemicals to see if uh, there is any difference in response. Uh, this is due to all the chemicals not having the same response. Um, with natoquinone being really the only one that shows any inflammation happening. Uh, we also want to assess the response to real world pollutants uh, from ambient sampling. Um, so we'll be taking filter, um, filters from a um, air sampler. We will then be uh, extracting the pollutants and treating our cells and looking at RNA-seq, which will give us a broad unbiased view on uh, what is being uh, operated in our immune response and what is potentially happening within the body. And I just want to thank my group, especially Sheena, for all of her help, as well as my co-supervisors, the Federal CDT and the Industrial Partners, DSTL. Thank you. Thanks very much, George. So looking for questions both online and in, in the room, I'm now monitoring the chat. So if you have questions online, I'll do my best to ask them. Any questions? Terry, I thought we'd come to you. Thank you, that was uh, really interesting. Um, how does the concentration of natroquinone relate to massive particles? Did you um, hear that? Was it how does natoquinone relate to massive particles? Yes. The amount of natoquinone that you looked at relate to particle mass. Um, what amount of natoquinone is there in a gram of these particles? Uh, as I mentioned before, obviously it's hard to quantify um, because it's just one of those components. Um, you'd probably have to ask a chemist to do. Um, that work to uh, figure that out, but it's only it will it'll probably only be quite a small um, amount of particle mass overall. Pete, I think you have a question online. Thanks, yeah. So it, it's it was really cool to see the effect of diesel pollution on cell death, but it seemed that cell death was a problem when the concentrations were it looked much higher than people might be exposed to if they're walking down the street and, and, and so on. Like, how, does, how do the concentrations that you work with relate to real world exposures? And is there any, any relation to the length of time that someone's you know, exposed to a lower level? Um, well, one of the future works that we are looking into, this is obviously just an isolated response of uh, measuring at 24 hours. We will be looking at chronic exposure, so um, how treating our cells with pollutants, giving them a rest, treating them again, uh, just to see um, what chronic exposure will happen. Obviously, right now, walking down the street, obviously, for a short period of time, you probably won't be exposed to such high levels as we've seen that will cause significant cell death. Um, I mean, unless you stand behind a bus and just inhale constantly, you should be fine. Okay. Um, let's. Thanks very much, George. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to the last talk of 